On this edition of Paint Your Engine, let's have a go at an LNER Gresley J50 tank. Now these were shunting engines first and foremost, so let's create an industrial background. The J50 came about more by accident than popular demand. In 1913, the Ivert L1082 tanks were being fitted with new boilers, but nearly 40 of them were built with no engines to put them on. At the same time, the Great Northern's chief mechanical engineer, Nigel Gresley, was designing a new locomotive for short-haul goods trains in Yorkshire. He already had numerous tender engines for the job, but a tank engine tended to have better adhesion weight, plus they were more flexible for shunting duties. So the first of these engines, originally classified as J23 by the Great Northern, appeared in December 1913, and by 1919 the class totaled 30 engines. In 1922, another batch was built with a shorter boiler and firebox, but a slightly bigger barrel. This would pretty much set the template for further engines to follow, which they did. After the grouping, the LNER adopted the design as a standard shunting engine, hence more batches were built in 1924, 26, 27, 30, 38 and 39. And by the Second World War, this made up 102 engines. The boiler also became a standard design, being fitted on the LNER C12s and J4s. The complicated thing about the J50s was that there were so many subclasses depending on their batches. The original Great Northern ones were rebuilt and reclassified as J51s, but also subdivided as J51-1 and slash 2. Each variant looked slightly different, mostly due to the coal bunker. The last variant, which was J50-4, had solid walls going all the way up to the cap roof, which made an already oddly proportioned engine look even more oddly proportioned. So for this painting, let's have a go at the more classic look, with rails on top of the bunker. The distinguishing feature of the J50 was their long side tanks, which sloped at the front. They make the engine look pretty ungainly, but they allowed for the engine to carry 1500 gallons of water which is more than most tank engines of a similar size could manage. You may also notice the tanks weren't entirely slab-sided. They had a little hole hovering between the two front axles. Now because this was made in the era when it was considered ugly to have the valve gear outside the frames, the valve gear was all inside. But because the tanks went all the way to the front of the loco, there was no other way for the crew to reach the valve gear for maintenance, so a little gap was left to allow access. The axle loading for the J50 was between 19 and 20 tonnes, which for any locomotive is pretty heavy, but the prototype had problems with weight distribution, with most of the 56 tonnes leaning on the front axle. This was solved by shortening the water tanks, making them flush with the smoke box, and adding an auxiliary water tank behind the cab. Now there have been J50s made for 00 gauge and train sim in recent years, and they've often been advertised hauling short haul passenger trains but it was actually pretty rare to find these engines pulling passenger trains outside the 1920s. They did empty stop workings, hence most of them had vacuum brakes, but they did on occasion work as pilots and bankers on passenger trains around Batley, but 38 of them only had steam brakes, so they couldn't all take passenger stock. Another myth is the liveries. Now the 1922 batch did wear Great Northern lined green and one of the 1913 batch was painted in LNER lined green in 1946, but most of them were either painted slate grey or black. In this instance, let's try and give our engine a mid-1920s look with red lining. In 1940, four of these engines were loaned out to the War Department. You'd think that such an engine would be ideal to adopt as one of their austerity designs, but it was too heavy and those holdout tanks made them complicated to build, so a Hunslet saddle tank was adopted instead. The LNER considered building another batch of these after the war, but being more strapped for cash than before, the railway had to make do with a batch of austerity tanks left over from War Department use, becoming the LNER's J94s. So it seems the J50s were unlucky during and after the war. To rub further salt into the wound, Arthur Peppercorn added an existing tank engine to the LNER's new standardization plan, but he chose the elder Northeastern J72 design from 1898, of which 28 were built between 1948 and 51. The existing J50s all survived into BR days, but when the 1955 modernization plan was published, no new steam shunting engines would be commissioned by anybody. The writing was literally on the wall. 
None were selected for the National Preserved Engines list, and furthermore, when Captain Bill Smith wanted to save an engine, he chose to preserve one of their predecessors, the Ivor J52 No. 68846 from 1899, by which time there were still 35 J50s based in the same shed. The J50s began to disappear from BR service in September 1958, and within five years, only seven engines were left, having been delegated to departmental stock. Three years later, the J50 was extinct. And I know some people in the comments are going to say, hang on a minute, wasn't the J50 the original concept for Thomas? To those people, I say, yes. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed painting it. If you like what you see and you'd like to see more, then please feel free to like, share, subscribe, discuss, contribute to Steam Locos in profile on Patreon, and why not have a go yourself? Why not paint your engine?